We have a trumpeter swan display at the Dickinson County Nature Center, but even when we're closed, you can still head outside into Kenyu Park and see the live trumpeter swans that live year-round on our wetland. So trumpeter swans are a really, really amazing bird because they are the largest waterfowl in North America. So their wingspan can reach up to eight feet long and their body length can be up to six feet long. So they are huge birds and they are native to Iowa. However, uh, in, once the settlers came to Iowa, trumpeter swans were actually extirpated in the state. So the last one was documented in the 1880s in Hancock County uh, because wetlands were drained, a lot of their habitat um, changed uh, as the Iowa was settled. In the 1930s, a countrywide survey found that there were only 69 trumpeter swan pairs in the entire continental U.S. So trumpeter swan populations were doing quite terribly. It was finally in the 1990s that the Iowa Department of Natural Resources decided to start a trumpeter swan rehabilitation and restoration program of which Dickinson County Conservation and many other conservation boards took part. So basically what they did was they started bringing in uh, swans from zoos and things like that and they would tag them and release them in Iowa. Uh, and then the first wild nesting pair came back and was documented in 1998. So that number continued to grow throughout the early 2000s, um, and it was about the early 20-teens that the DNR stopped the restoration program um, because trumpeter swan numbers have done really, really well. So uh, you can now see trumpeter swans as they start to migrate through the area in the spring, and it is a lot of fun uh, to be able to see these really magnificent birds. Now there are a couple of different kinds of birds that sometimes get uh, confused with trumpeter swans. So trumpeter swans are protected in Iowa, um, and you can tell them apart from other kinds of swans, one by their beak. So trumpeter swans have a solely black beak also black feet. Um, however, there is also a tundra swan that would migrate through the area and tundra swans um, are a little bit smaller than trumpeter swans but sometimes that's hard to tell from a distance so they have a little bit of yellow right here on their nose so that's a good way to be able to tell them apart from trumpeter swans. And then a lot of times when we think swan, we think of those cool swans that uh, are in wetlands or maybe gardenscapes um, and they have like a hump on their nose um, and have some orange on their bill. And those are actually mute swans. So those would not be a native swan in Iowa, uh, but you might see them in some landscaping designs. Sometimes in different areas, they'll have mute swans there. Uh, also, snow geese sometimes get confused for swans because snow geese are white. However, they are quite different. So they have pink feet, they have kind of a pinkish colored bill, and then also uh, on their underwing, they have black. Um, so when they're flying, you can see that they have black on their wings uh, that swans would not have. Also, snow geese are quite a bit smaller than swans are. So if you're out this spring and you're looking at all the different waterfowl migrating through the area, see if you can see a trumpeter swan and always keep that key uh, in the back of your head that not only are they the biggest swan that you'll see, but also they won't have any markings on their beak, so they have an all black beak. Now another interesting thing about waterfowl, including trumpeter swans, um, is the way that their bill works. So you can see this is the top of a trumpeter swan's skull, and if you look underneath here, they have this kind of sawtooth type of, um, it's not really teeth, um, but they're called lamellae. Waterfowl have these uh, because it helps them when they are searching for vegetation. So swans like to they'll duck their heads under and look for vegetation underwater. Um, and what they do is they'll take a big mouthful and then they can expel extra water and extra mud or you know dirt sediment that they get in their mouth. Um, they can kind of squirt it out through uh, the soft tooth. Uh, lamellae and then what stays in their mouth then is any seeds or plants 
uh, maybe even some insects that they pick up so their food will stay in their mouth or they can expel all of the rest of the stuff that they picked up uh, through these little sawtooth creatures. So trumpeter swans and other waterfowl have really, really neat skulls. Now, Kenya Park has trumpeter swans because they were part of our restoration program. So both of our swans here are flightless. So you can see them on the Kenya Park wetland year round. Um, and the male was from a rehabilitation facility in Washington. And the female ran into a power line as a signet. Um, so she's missing part of one of her wings. And that is the reason that she can no longer fly. Um, so they stay here year round even in the winter we have an aerator that keeps open water for them they haven't bred yet although we always keep our fingers crossed that uh, perhaps in the future they will lay some eggs maybe they will this spring that would be awesome uh, but you can come check out the swans we have an observation tower here in kenyu park a uh, dock that you can walk out onto to get a closer look at them they have a feeding station on the dock uh, where they eat swan food and cracked corn and uh, different foods like that uh, throughout the winter before the vegetation starts to grow in our wetland um, and so even if you're social distancing and staying away from other people which is highly recommended right now uh, you can still come enjoy the beauty of Kenya Park including the beautiful trumpeter swans.